So I want to welcome everybody to the online best practices meeting. We're going to do this three times in three half hour blocks. Our agenda for tonight is as follows. We've got the trio on for best practices, about 15 minutes and some slides. Now, it's not our role or our job to say you need to use this technology. It is our job and our role to help you and to facilitate how you want to use technology to continue the, the Toastmasters experience. If you get with some of your, your deck members, including your area directors and your division directors, there are specific incentives that are designed for this period to get people engaged. This is, an, if you get to your club to be distinguished, you have a choice between a $100 gift certificate or a free Zoom Pro membership for a year for your club. And we're doing that because from a, a scalability standpoint, the district is certainly helping in scheduling clubs as they go, but the more we can empower the clubs themselves, the better it will be. Every day has a special guest comments for five minutes, and then we have Q&A for 10 minutes. Does anybody have any questions about the agenda? Okay. And Alan, if you could kind of monitor the chat box, that would be great. So from an online standpoint, the platform doesn't matter. You need to choose what works best for you and your team. A lot of people use Zoom. We're using Zoom right now. This is a choice of Toastmasters International. It's paid for, but it is a fee-based thing based upon the scalability of what you've got. You may also use Microsoft Teams. If your organization or your club has 365 Teams is useful because it does a lot of the same things that Zoom does as far as screen sharing and recording and collaboration. Now, if you also notice on here, I put a number of other ones. I put Skype, Slack, and free conference call. And I, I grouped all these together for a fairly simplistic reason. Skype is an old standard. It's kind of like AOL. It's still there, people still use it. But it's been bought out by Microsoft and they've now moved a lot of it over to Teams. Slack. Slack, as I know that there's a number of people on the call that have used it, Slack is a great platform. <coughs> but Slack has a challenge, the challenge being that it is tech-based. So you've got to have a fairly high engineering background to make sure you don't have these kind of issues. Freeconferencecall.com is another one. It is free. The challenge becomes, if you have technical issues, how do you get support for it? Now, quickly, I'm gonna open it up just for a brief session. Does anybody wanna add another platform to this? Yeah, this is Eric Hunt. We use Google Hangouts at work. There you go. Now, challenge with Google is gonna be that it is, it is Google-centric, isn't it? I, I believe so, yeah. Right, so. So they, so they have to have a Google account. And uh, Lee Holiday has also raised his hand. Good job, Lee. Hey, Trent. Um, a version we tried out, it's free, free source, public domain, and it worked okay, but we just decided we'd go with, with this instead. But it was called Jitsi, J-I-T-S-I. -I. Right. Very good point. So as has been expressed, it really, as long as your club and your team decides on the platform that makes the most sense for them, that's what matters. It's not really tech-based. There are some that are going to be challenging one way or the other. How many people, if you have an Apple phone, you use FaceTime a lot? Well, FaceTime doesn't very well work for Android. So it's really, are you going to remove the technology and make sure that it works? Now, all the things we talk about, and there's a slide at the end of this that talks about links. 
this is very important and we actually have an entire module on this that will be up that is uploaded into the, the district google accounts leap stands for light environment attire and portrait so when we look across the platform that we have tonight we'll see people in a variety of light people that may or may not be well lit, well examined, et cetera. They may, like me, have a window in their background that I've had to cover up with something to make it such. It is, again, they're gonna see Richard right now, he's waving his hand because he actually has a background like that. Okay. Uh, Alan, do we have some people in the chat box right now? They're saying that they're losing audio. They're losing audio for me? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I think that's an a, a individual user technical problem because a couple of us are fine. So Yeah, I can hear you. Well, we got it from Lee and from Dave so far. Okay. Well, I think Dave means he has audio. Not, okay. He did not have audio. All right. And Lee <laughs> just got back in. All right. So we're good. So, again, but, you know, as we go through these types of things, these are common challenges because my Wi-Fi is not Lisa's Wi-Fi. Lisa has fiber to her house. I live in Pendleton, South Carolina. We're lucky to get megabit. You know, I think AOL just finally pulled out and MindSpring left too. So again, as we go through these types of things, but it is the light. It is, are you gonna look at it ahead of time? If I had to give one overriding thing for all these types of things, it is prepare and practice because the last thing you want is to be in the middle of your speech and then have a technical issue the last thing you want is to say how do i share powerpoint how do i do this oh am i muted am i muted all these things are part of the process we talk about when alan myself and the rest of the members of leadership lab started the process we went through a lot of these false starts we did go through a lot of these things we're talking about one of the articles that's actually up on the website right now does talk about environment if you look across the spectrum for the people that are on this call you do want to make sure that you bust those dishes and your clothes <laughs> Trust me when I tell you that if we scan and pan around this room, you may or may not find out that somebody might not have gotten that coffee cup out. They didn't actually bust that dish or heaven's for resting, they didn't actually do those unmentionable. That's talking about clothes. Uh, Alan, I guess we got some more in the chat box. Uh, Chloe just said that they're starting a Zoom session 30 minutes before the gavel. One of, the, one of the recommendations. Very good point. So now there's a challenge there too, because if you're going to record it, then you're also gonna to need to edit that pre-meeting stuff. Like Subi and I were talking prior to this, we talked about restaurants, et cetera, which is great networking and it's still a part of this meeting, but we don't need to record it. The next one on here is attire. I don't know if people understand what I wrote when I said it's a uniform, wear it. But when we go to work, we put on a uniform. It doesn't matter if it's a military uniform or if it's coat and tie or whatever it is. It could be khakis. The point is that when we do that, it causes us to then approach things differently. If you look at people on the call, a number of us actually have on immediate they, we have on polos for toastmasters international we may have on a coat we may have on business attire doing that causes us to also be part of the meeting the last one on here is about portraits i'm sorry to tell you that dell latitudes and and that crowd they stuck the webcam at the bottom of the screen and so it is noses need not apply. If you bring up their webcam, 
you're going to get a great picture of somebody's nose hair, which we hope they trim. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> but see, Brian just went in, and he's in a great space, isn't he? You can actually see what he's doing based upon the portrait that he has. Lisa has the flags of the nation. Now, in fairness to the flags of the nation, yes, Alan. Uh, one other thing on attire is you don't want to have something on that is so multicolored and so bright that it would be distracting when you're having a video conference with a lot of people. Because if you don't stop your, your video, then a lot of people will naturally focus in on because you're so then focusing in on the presenter. Very good point. In fact, actually, I just put on a nice little scarf. Doesn't it actually go with my outfit very well? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, Trent. <laughs> All right. So I put together seven rules. And, you know, as good things, we, we, we do research on there. But it, if you look at these, there is an overriding thing in there. If you look at how to make a successful meeting, how to do things correctly, you have an agenda. You do a roll call. You actively facilitate conversation. One of the challenges you have on an online format is it's really, really easy for people to just mute their microphone, turn off their video, and you've lost them. It does come down to how much you're going to do it. Creating space. If you notice, as we've gone through this, we've stopped and we've engaged people. We've talked about what's going on with them and it gives people a chance to contribute. The chat box is a great example. You're also gonna make space for, discon you know, for, for people dissenting. You know, in fairness, myself and Subi don't agree on everything, but she's still a good friend of mine. So we, <laughs> we choose to have that space to then hear two sides of the coin. Looking at a meeting and looking at a successful meeting plan, these are the exact same things. Have clear next steps, end on time. Do what you're supposed to do. Do facilitation. Hey, maybe you're going to mix it out. When we started this process, Leadership Laboratory actually did one virtual and one online meeting a month. And it actually was great because we got the, boast of the, the best of both platforms. Lee wants us to smile. Oh, yes. We need to smile more often. <laughs> so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this eye chart. It's part of the, the stuff we've got out there. This was actually something from another district that talks about a meeting and all the pieces that are in there. So this is important to talk about the different roles people have. If you look at this meeting and you have a timer associated with it, how are they going to do that? Are you using an application? Are you holding up cards? What are you doing? The best takeaway I have is this slide right here. I talk about best practices from Google, Slack, virtual meetings, how to run one, a timer application, a great YouTube channel, and also support from Zoom. All of these slides are available to everyone on this call. My point is not to take over the conversation. My point is to facilitate the conversation itself. So I do believe at this time, Lori, you are our guest speaker tonight, are you not? Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna turn the floor over to Lori. Okay. So, Lori, you've done online training and learning for how many years? For 15 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I started way back when it was an experiment. 
and learned a lot. So a lot of that has morphed and changed over the years. It's become a lot more user friendly, like anything else technology wise. We have a lot of options right now. And you've already talked a lot about how to prepare, how to show up, those kind of things. What I wanted to highlight were some technical issues. The lighting, I, I'm looking at the lighting as I'm showing up in this small box is different than the lighting that is in my online classroom. My online classroom shows up more brightly and perhaps if I was on presenter view, it would be a little brighter than this. But I actually have studio lights in here because this is my classroom. And I, I covered up some of the, uh, the kitty wonders, ABCs and one, two, threes, tried to look a little more <laughs> professional. What I have behind me is just a photography. Oh, now we're gonna try this out, okay. What I have behind me is a photography backdrop. You can get this and hang it on a dowel rod, hang it behind you. If you don't have a decent backdrop or a, a place that is good for your background, you can do a little something. You can get a tri-fold board and put on a chair behind you. There are any number of things you can do, but it comes down to practice, practice, practice. Practice before you perform. Get good first. Get good at it. So don't wait until your first meeting to practice the Zoom. Find someone else who wants to learn with you, practice with you. I've done that with Facebook Live. I've formed a small group with people who just wanted to practice and we come in there, we practice, we get on there, we give each other feedback a lot like Toastmasters. And that's how we learned. So we have to do the same thing with the Zoom. As far as equipment goes, it can be good, better, best. You can use what you have. I have these studio lights. I, the lighting in here is okay. But what you want to avoid, and I'll see if I can create this a little bit, is sometimes you can get these lights and it's not picking it up with this camera. It was doing it before I practiced, but with ring lights like this, you can get a piece of equipment like this. It's not terribly expensive. You can put your phone in here or you can clip it and use it behind your computer. But you want to watch because sometimes it can make you very ghost-like. So look for the halo, look for the glow with the light. Sometimes there's a glow over your head or to one side or the other, and it can be distracting when people are trying to focus on you. So that's one thing to watch about the lighting. You can also get small ring lighting or big ring lighting. This clips right over your phone. This can clip right over the camera on your computer. When you're talking about portrait, one thing you want to focus on is to center yourself in the picture as if you are in a portrait frame. I generally aim for the heart. That's easy to remember. I try to make sure that I'm head and shoulders in the camera because you don't wanna be like this. You don't wanna be all face and you don't wanna be so far back that people can't make out your features. You want to be seen from here. When it comes to doing speeches, I think each club will have to decide what the parameters are for that. Do you want to practice online speaking to become skilled at that? Or are you wanting to do what we would call traditional speech where it's full body and people are analyzing, evaluating our entire body language, our full body language? When you're on camera, one thing you have to be very, very careful about with gestures, and I've learned this the hard way because I primarily teach right now five to eight-year-olds. And so if you make a mistake or you scare them on the camera, they let you know very quickly there's no guesswork. <laughs> with your gestures, you want to move a little more slowly than you would in person for two reasons. One is just how the camera picks it up naturally. And the other thing is if there's any lag at all in the transmission, then it looks very choppy. So you don't want to be doing a lot of this in front of your face. And we tend to hold our gestures and hands out here when we're talking. 
we put our hands out in front of us. If I'm showing you something and I go like this, ooh, did you see that? I saw some of you jump back. So when I come into the camera very quickly, and I've learned that with my students, I think I'm showing them something and they're in terror jumping back from the camera. So you want to keep things by your face or slightly in front. And that includes your hands. If you're making gestures or a point, you want to keep your hands back here and not out in front of you. As far as what we wear in the background, you want to watch two things. Check your own complexion. I have a friend who's very, very pale. And he always uses a bright white background and then wears a bright shirt because he believes that makes him show up more clearly in the camera. In other, if, in other backgrounds other than the bright white, he tends to fade out. So if I'm, are you giving me a timer? Green. Green, okay. I'm almost done, good. So tonight I have a light background. I wore dark clothing so that there would be a contrast. If this were a darker background, then I would wear light or brighter clothing. But as Alan said before, you don't want to wear a lot of patterns because it's very distracting when people are trying to look at you. And they focus on the pattern and sometimes the pattern can even become a little pixelated if the camera, tran the internet transmission is not its best. So whatever we're doing, it can be good, better, or best as far as equipment is concerned and as far as we are concerned because we're learning. So I like this quotation by G.K. Chesterton, anything worth doing is worth doing badly. <laughs> we're not going to start off well. The, when we begin, it's going to be less than our best, but we can all get better if we just practice, practice, practice. Thank you, Lori. Oh, I'm sorry. And actually, we've got a couple of comments already in the chat box. So, Lee Holiday, you talked about an ASL practice for applause. And you're muted. Yes. So American Sign Language practice for applause is this. And one of the things we did last night, too, is we tried to do the Pledge of Allegiance, everybody doing it at the same time. And it was almost humorous because there's no way you can synchronize on that. So I don't know what we're going to do about that. Tell everybody to say it and mute themselves while they're doing it. But um, the American Sign Language thing ended up being good because you want to give that recognition, but actually clapping doesn't do well on the video. Thank you, Lee. So we've got about six minutes left for some Q&A. First of all, I want to ask Lori a question about the headset. This has come up several times. Variances between using a headset and not, and which works for you? I usually use a headset on all calls just because the sound is clearer. I'll give you an example. I'm, I'm also hardwired. That's something to consider. I have a cable coming into my computer, so if you don't have the best transmission or sound, you can always check that, see if you can plug in if you're not getting a good internet signal. But I'll give you an example. I have several mics hooked up here. So let me see if I can do this. I practice, practice, practice before. We'll see if I do it well or do it badly. Okay. This should be my computer mic. I don't know if Oh yeah, we lost you. Well, all right. Okay. I'm back. Yeah, much better. Can you hear me? Okay, this is my um, headset. Okay, and it may be that the other automatically kicked out because I have this headset plugged in, but I'm going to try this.
Can you hear me now? Yep. Yes. Okay. Do you notice a difference in that sound? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That, this is, I don't know if you can see it. This is um, a Blue Yeti stereo mic. Okay. So that is for a new podcast that I'm starting. So I just got this mic. I'm just trying to learn how to use it. But I just wanted you to hear the difference, the sound quality. That's where I was saying good, better, and best. That your computer mic will be okay. A headset will be better. And it doesn't have to always the earbuds if it has a mic on it. And some of those pick up really well. And it's, it's less um, nerdy than this. I like nerd. Thank you, Lori. We've got about uh, four minutes left. Other questions? And Lee did uh, point out in the chat box that, yes, uh, Bob also demonstrated this on, on Saturday, but a lot of people on this call were not there on Saturday. Other questions? Either in the chat box or, oh, uh, Brian Wolf. Yes. Lori, you look directly into the screen all the time. Do you keep ending over the hole to keep your eye looking in the right position or how do you keep looking in the right spot all the time? Practice, practice, practice. <laughs> and, and the hard thing is, is it's different on different platforms. On Facebook Live, I have to look in a different place slightly than I am right now. Mm -hmm. Also, I have my computer in a, in, the, in a good spot. I have it at a height mm -hmm. that I can almost look directly, you know, I'm looking straight ahead. I have it slightly above my eye level. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that it, it comes down a little bit. That's a little more flattering, you know, for um, my double chin. And I, I can hide that a little more, but it's a more flattering um, camera angle if it's coming down slightly instead of straight on and it makes it easier and i look right at the blue light it's a little awkward okay because i want to look at you i want to look at everyone's faces okay all right so we've got about two minutes left and the chat box is blowing up so um first of all lee please do the sign again lee holiday please do the american sign language thing again that was one of the requests yes and we've got a bunch of people talking about different speakers, et cetera. Also talked about keeping eye contact with video. Lori represented that really well. We also had a conversation about voting. Zoom has the ability to do polls as long as it's been set up by an administrator ahead of time. So there's lots of ways to do polls. A lot of those are going to be situational based upon what they are. So this is not really kind of the right form to talk about a lot of those things. You, people do them live. They use SurveyMonkey. They use voting box. It doesn't whatever works for your group is the best thing. And Lisa, if you're using Zoom, the best method to vote is to have the attendees private message the vote counter. So it's just the same thing as if you're returning in a piece of paper. Only the vote counter sees the person's names and the votes, and then they can quickly tally those things up. And then there was one other question, uh, which was about Donna setting up the invites. So those of you that are using, and awesome that you're taking advantage of the district Zoom account to, to conduct your meetings, we actually have it set that you don't have to have a moderator or one of us in there to start the meeting. So people have, that have been doing that of just joining the meeting and you're able to do that. The thing you can't do uh, when you're using our version of the Zoom account, because it is uh, a subscription that's to the district, is you can't do the polls. So do, do your voting the private message way and you can't record the meeting. Those are the only two constraints, but everything else you can do. All right, so we're about out of time. I've got Ruth, I think you had a quick, quick comment and then Subi will follow up with you. Uh, no, but I will. Um, so you're saying that Toastmasters has paid so that we can use a specific account that has been paid by Toastmasters Internet. So the, the, the district has no. a Zoom account that you can actually reserve time on. Toastmasters International likes Zoom. That's all we're saying. Okay. All right. As long as nobody else is using it at that time. 
And that is a conflict. Yes, it is. Subi, okay. bring us home. Yeah. yeah, the other day I attended a, a club in Atlanta, club meeting in Atlanta, and they used a program, www.menti.com. Menti.com. And what it does, you can submit, the, each attendee can submit a comment about the speaker. To each speaker, it goes to the speakers. And it can also vote. We can vote for the individual speaker, evaluator. And I have asked that gentleman to send us the steps. As soon as I receive it, I will send it to you. Thank you, Subi. I want to thank everybody for coming on tonight. Uh, Lisa or Alan, any closing thoughts? Not from me. I think everybody had great questions, and I hope everyone learned something. And we'll be doing this two more times. Lisa? Uh, oh, Ruth. I will just say, trying to learn this myself, and after a 30-minute tutorial from Zoom, this is more complicated in the technicalities of it. So like Lisa said, you really do have to practice. And how you would share the screen for the agenda, that's something that I think will have to be practiced. And again, we've been through that with Leadership Lab. It took us four tries before we finally got it right. Oh, gosh. So, um, <laughs> I want to thank everybody for, for joining tonight. And as we go, uh, thank you all. And I've got, yeah, a, quick, I've got a, a quick Yes, yes. Can I ask a question? Sorry. So um, can you, maybe you described this in the beginning already and I missed it, but can you describe how do you get set up with the Zoom other than emailing Donna? So you can just go to zoom.us and get an account. It's free. The only caveat so, is, it, go ahead. Are, we, are, you, are you asking that we use the district account? No, you, you don't have to, you don't have, the district account is offered to people on a first come first serve basis. However, if you want to go to zoom.us and get an account, there are paid accounts and there are free accounts. The free accounts are limited to 40 minutes for a meeting. But I hear tell from many Toastmasters and other professionals that Zoom is not necessarily kicking people out right now because of the virus at the 40 minute mark. Right. Uh, but I have not personally tested it, but I've just seen a lot of people saying that they are doing 60 minute meetings with the free account. So I would say use that at a, as a caution that you may get kicked out. But uh, So if we do request the time for the district meeting account, um, will Donna just send us that process information and is that just login information and then is there also just a template for how to run a meeting. And maybe you went over this in the first few minutes and I missed it, I apologize. No, and actually the, some, of the, some of the details that are available on the district website include step-by-step -step for meetings as well as best practices. So there's, if you look at the, the list of links that I had up in there, they have a number of things on best practices for meetings. But I would suggest that we take this offline so, do you have my email address? For those that don't, I'm putting it in the chat box right now. So, we are out of time, and according to Toastmasters guidelines, we must end the meeting. But, Anna, please. We can certainly take this offline and I can sit, share with you a bunch of stuff. Um, it's not, it's not, it, as Lori says, it just takes practice, practice, practice. So we're all on our way to Carnegie Hall. We just need to practice, practice, practice. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you all. Have a good night. Keep smiling, everybody. All right. Bye. Bye. Very good.